you this day in the precious name of our Lord and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for taking your time to listen to the Word of God and allow God to bless you in a very special way. I believe 2021 is going to be a special year. Never mind all the attacks of the enemy. Never mind all the attacks of sickness and disease. God is always greater. It is written in the word of God, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord God shall raise your standard. I believe it's a time to get revelation. I believe it's a time to get closer to God. I believe it's a time to reassert our lives so that God can accomplish all the things he desires to accomplish. Uh, this is my second part of a teaching I began with you children of God uh, about how to obtain a more excellent ministry. The desire, the passion, the drive of a more excellent ministry must never be quenched, not by the circumstances, not by discouraging words. A righteous man may fall, but a righteous man always rise up again and starts afresh. And therefore, right now, I want us to bow our heads. And as I pray, allow yourself to commune with Almighty God. Communicate and connect with the God of heaven. Allow that which is spiritual to transcend that which is natural. Father, we thank you this day that we come in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we ask you that, O oh God, the heavens will be open of our lives. Reveal to us, O oh God, the mysteries of the kingdom, above all your word and the principles that come out of your word. Empower your children in a very powerful way this morning. I pray that as I speak your word, our clarity and utterance will be released, O oh God, and bless your people with a new energy and a new drive to excel in every area of their lives. We thank you for hearing us always in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I will go back to our scripture, but today I will just read uh, just a few portions of it. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 8, I'll read verse number 1 and 2, and then also read uh, verse number 5 and verse number uh, 6, and then we'll pick it up from there. It says in verse number 1 of Hebrews chapter number 8, uh, I hope you're listening and I hope you've got your Bible, uh, because this is the word of the living God. Now, this is the main point. Of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest. Take note, he's there, he's on our side. He is there to help us. You see, when I say we have such a high priest, take that as part of uh, your arsenal, your the resources you have. More are they that are with us than those who are against us. Because he's on your side, you cannot fail. You and Jesus equals a majority. You and Jesus equals a winning team. You and Jesus equals as long as he is on your side, guess what? He is your advocate, your lawyer. He is the one who fights for you. And it's important that you always know we have such a high priest. Not we shall have. He's already there standing on our behalf. Where is he? Seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. He is seated at the seat of power. And because he is where the seat of power is, we have access to all the power we need. A minister of the sanctuary. Uh, in other words, he is there to minister like a servant. And when we are in the house of the Lord, he is moving in our lives. Uh, he is dishing out all that we need, the healing, the peace, the joy. He is a minister in the sanctuary. You know, you don't have to see him with your natural eyes. Oh, but he's moving by his Holy Spirit. Uh, and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected and not man. And of course, I go down to verse number five. It says, who saved the copy and shadow of the heavenly things as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he's also the mediator of a better covenant established on better promises. When Moses went to the mountain, 
Listen to me very carefully. Uh, in the book of uh, Exodus, uh, and he was getting the law of the Lord from God uh, in the mountain when he spent 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, God had told him, build me a tabernacle. But God told him the plan of it, the blueprint of it, the pattern of it will come from me. You see, it's important. Moses got the pattern, came down, and he was saying, make sure that everything follows the pattern. If you are going to be guaranteed success, 100% victory, 100% outcome, ask yourself, am I doing it according to the pattern of the Word of God? Because when you do it according to the pattern, the glory of God will be on it. And then it says about Jesus, now he has obtained a more excellent ministry uh, based on better promises, uh, mediate of a better covenant, uh, and that ministry is not for him. He does not need a more excellent ministry because you cannot improve on God. You know, he's already the best of the best. And he, he, when he, whatever he obtained, whether it's healing or deliverance at Calvary, uh, at the resurrection, when he carried his blood to go before the Father as an advocate, it was not for him. It was for you and for me. And so, here it is what I want to begin by saying to you. At the cross, Jesus releases the life of God. The divine life of God. But it must find expression in us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. See, when you give your life to Jesus, the life of God is imparted to you. But it must now find expression in us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. How does it find expression? By a more excellent ministry in what we do. You see, the, 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 the other side of that equation is this. Adam had given Satan the legal right to hold every man in sin, to kill, steal, and destroy. He was destroying the greatness of God in man. And when Adam handed over this right, he submitted himself to demonic uh, of control of demonic spirits. But through Christ, we are delivered from that control. Through Christ, we are set free uh, from the power of sin and death. And through Christ, uh, we now are overcoming the enemy. And, and so many a time in this journey, uh, in your work with God, don't allow the enemy to kill the dream. Don't allow the enemy to kill the vision. Don't allow the enemy to kill even the desire for greatness. Because God Almighty, who has begun a good work in you, he wants to bring you to a destiny of excellency. And so it matters that your future be a future of, uh, of, of, of abundance, be a future of a ministry of excellency. And as, as you pursue, as you overcome, uh, as you conquer the hindrances, uh, God will begin to release uh, his glory through your life. But there are three questions I want to bring across to you. You know, in the book of Philippians, uh, which uh, I would like to read again today in chapter uh, number two, it, it really matters because there are three questions I want to ask you. And these questions, I want you to be able to answer them uh, personally. Number one, am I willing to humble myself in order to obtain an outcome of excellency. That's question number one. Am I willing to lay down my life so that God can give it back to me again? Number three. Am I willing to serve the people of God that I normally would not want to serve if the outcome is a ministry of excellency? I will do those questions again a little later. But right now, let me read uh, this scripture, which I believe uh, will make us understand what I'm talking about. It says in Philippians 2, verse number 5, Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, uh, who in, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking himself the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of man. Listen to this. Let this mind be in you. Allow it. Think like it. What mind? Christ, even though he was God, did not even think it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. He took 
the likeness of a born servant. He came in the likeness of men. He didn't go around saying, do you know who I am? No. He knew who he was. But he took our nature to redeem our nature. That's the question I was asking. Are you willing to humble yourself? I'll tell you why a little later. Are you willing to lay down your life so that God can give it back to you again? And as we read Philippians 2, verse number 8 says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every other name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, those three questions I asked you are going to matter a lot as to how far you walk with God and how far you succeed and how far you excel in your life in 2021. Am I willing to humble myself? Jesus was willing. He willingly said, Father, I will lay down my life and I'll take it up again. He said, I will allow myself to be born like a man and grow up. I allow myself to let people take me and crucify me. And I will not say it's a loss. I'm being obedient to God. He was willing to lay down his life. And God gave it back to him again. He was willing to save people who were less uh, than himself. Uh, but he loved them and he loved us. And today we are born again. And my Bible says the result. Please get this. The result is God has given him a name that is above every other name. God has highly exalted him. Uh, God has made it in such a way that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow down and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The first key to a excellent ministry is humbling yourself. And I'm going to give you seven keys here today. <coughs> and each of those keys, they matter in your journey to excellency. Number one, humble yourself because God will resist the proud. He declares war on everyone who is proud. God becomes your enemy and opposes all that you do if you refuse to humble yourself. Did you read it in the book of James in chapter number four? He clearly says that very powerful and frightening scripture. Listen to these words right now. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Then face verse number six. But he gives more grace to the humble. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. When you're proud, can you imagine God resisting you? God becoming your enemy and God opposing everything you do? That's what the Bible says. And you will not succeed. But we'll look at a little more of that a little later. But number two, he says God gives grace to the humble. If there's anything that the children of God want these days, is God, give me grace. God, I want grace upon my life. Oh, God, let your grace be sufficient for me. But grace comes because you have fulfilled a condition. What does it say? He resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Do you want grace? Be humble. That's what it says. He gives grace to the humble. He gives undeserved help. He gives favor to the humble. When you lower yourself, God reacts by sending grace into your life. Undeserved help comes when you take the path of humility. Help in the church. Help in ministry, help in leadership, help in your finances, help in your business. Can you imagine that when you have chosen to humble yourself and people may even look down on you and say, ah, look at that person, you know, he's humbling himself. But the result of it is called the help of God. Everyone say help of God. You know, it's called undeserved help, undeserved favor. That is the grace of God. In every area, when you show yourself in humility, God shows up in favor over your life. The third key, I want you to capture this, is when you humble yourself, ah, then you will be lifted to the next level of your life. 
instead of seeking promotion, choose to become a servant, become a child who can be trained, who can be instructed, and he will exalt you in due time. In other words, exaltation is to be gloriously lifted up into the beauty and into the shining excellence which is of God. You know, I'm talking and I'm teaching about how to obtain a ministry of excellency. And the road to it is not by going around and saying I'm better than anybody else. It's not going around by saying I'm proud. Uh -uh. It is by humbling yourself. Then there's a lifting up. I desire to see every child of God lifted. I desire to see champions raised up by God. I desire to see Servants of God lifted up by God. I desire to see gifted people lifted up by God. Our worshipers lifted up. Our ushers lifted up. I desire to see you lifted. But the root to being promoted by God is the root of humility. Don't seek uh, and say, God, here I am. Please lift me up. You say, God, here I am humbling myself. You know the story of Joseph is always a blessing. When he was at the lowest, right in the uh, prison uh, in Egypt, you know, it began like this. He was saying, God, uh, I saw the vision. Uh, you want me to be the head. You want me to be above. God says, yes, you are right. And the road there is a road of humility. He was put in a pit by his brothers. Uh, and then as he thought, wow, what is this now? How can I get into a pit when I'm believing God for a lifting? Then the next thing was put down as a seven in Potiphar's house. When he thought, I can never go any lower than this. The next thing was in a prison. Low, lower, lowest. And when he was at his lowest, then God came by spirit, lifted him to the highest place, to the palace. They, as they say, the last stage before promotion is a stage when you are in the prison. When you humble yourself, God will lift you in a glorious way. Uh, when you're willing to be a servant, God will make you a ruler because you know he will not abuse the rulership. Uh, key number four, when you humble yourself, do you know what? You will be protected and you will be covered. Uh, this is a very powerful one. Please open with me to 1 Peter chapter number 5, uh, verse number 5. Today we are going through a teaching line upon line, scripture upon scripture. Uh, it is critical that we be able to look at it. 1 Peter 5, verse number 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. First, no one can force you to be in submission. You have to volunteer to submit yourself. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. I cannot overemphasize that. Be in submission to one another, but let your clothing be one of humility. Because God will resist the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And casting all your cares upon him, because he cares for you. And of course, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But resist him in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brothers in the whole world. Listen to this here. I said it's a spiritual covering. Uh, it's not just an attitude. It's, it's not just being poor or being simple. It's not looking timid or looking defeated. Uh -uh, don't mistake it. When we're talking about humility, we are saying it's a spiritual cloak that covers you. It protects the Christian from spiritual disasters and evils. When you put humility, you will be covered, you will be protected, and you will be delivered. Yes, it says, be clothed with one another, uh, and God will resist the proud, but he will give grace to the humble. Because when you're under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due time. Number five, when you humble yourself, uh, it's because pride is the signal of your soon coming destruction. You know, pride signals that you'll fall uh, and uh, evil and catastrophe will come in your direction. When you're humbling yourself, uh, you are removing dangers from your life and ministry. Satan is always attracted to people who exalt themselves and who are overconfident in what they do. It's an open door to him. Demons of shame and destruction attracted by pride. 
pride. Refuse to be a person who allows pride uh, to enter into you. The reason the devil became the devil was because of pride. But when you humble yourself, you have, he has no access to you. Uh, shame will have no portion in your life. A uh, falling down and evil will have no space in your life. Uh, we are talking about our journey to obtaining a ministry of excellency. When you humble yourself in the sight of God, this is number six. Uh, it is because pride is essentially satanic and demonic. Satan fell out of heaven through arrogance and pride. In pride, he lifted himself against the throne of God, threatened to replace God. It's wrong to challenge your spiritual leaders who raise you up because of pride. The words pride and Satan are synonymous. Satan is a spirit, and pride is an attitude and a speech that is caused by the presence of Satan. When you begin to become proud, you know, Satan has arrived on the scenario. He begins to think, well, you are better than other people, and no one can tell you anything. Anytime you see pride in an individual, you are recognizing the presence of an evil spirit. And Satan is the originator of pride. That's why God hates pride and opposes anyone in whom he detects pride in. That's why today we are rejected totally the spirit of pride from anything concerning our lives. This, uh, then point number seven, pride will make you an abomination. You know, Proverbs 16, that's my last scripture, uh, which I'm opening with you today. Proverbs chapter number 16, uh, let's look at that. It will help us because, you know, so many children of God have stagnated and they don't understand why uh, they've allowed this spirit to hinder them. Oh, but, you know, this is the negative side. But the next thing I'm going to give is the positive side. What you can actually become uh, to obtain the excellence that God wants you to become. Jesus humbled himself to the death of the cross. They buried him, but God raised him up. And he himself taught us that when you humble Humble yourself like little children, uh, you'll obtain the kingdom of God. Proverbs 16, verse number 5. Listen to this. Verse number 5 says, everyone, doesn't matter who, pastor, bishop, child of God, man, women, small people, great people, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. Doesn't matter who it is. Says pride is an abomination. And an abomination is something that God stinks in the eyes of God. It's something that God doesn't like at all. God is outraged at a proud people. He, he, he says, actually, he loathes them. Uh, it's not a good thing for God to dislike you at any point in time. And he says, that, uh, it's an abomination to the Lord. Can you imagine uh, when you're coming before God and you're trying to worship uh, and you're trying to pray and God says, wait a minute, you're stinking. I don't want to hear your prayers and I don't want uh, uh, your presence near me. Why? Because of a simple spirit you permitted called pride. Uh, but today, we want to make a quality decision. Today, we want to take a, a quality decision choice to say we want our outcome to be an outcome of being lifted by God. We want our outcome to be an outcome of getting grace and favor from God. We want our outcome to be an outcome of a more excellent ministry, to be loved by God, uh, to know God is on your side. And the journey there begins by rejecting the spirit of pride, willing to humble yourself. I asked you these three questions. I'll end with those three again. Am I willing to humble myself. By the way, no one can humble you. By the way, not a bishop, not a leader, not a preacher. He says, you yourselves, you have to make your personal inside heartfelt decision to say, I choose to humble myself. Yes, there may be many things. I may be, people may say even many things about you, but you choose to say, no matter what I've accomplished, no matter how much education, no matter how much money, no matter how big a church I've raised up, no matter how many miracles I've done. When I'm in the presence of God, I'm simply a small person. And I choose to humble myself. Number one. Number two, am I willing to lay down my life yeah, so that God can give it back to me again? Laying down your life uh, simply means whatever God commands, whatever God says. If he says fast, you fast. If he says kneel to pray, you pray. If he says give, you give. Raise your hands, you raise your hands. Go and talk to someone 
on you go. You're willing to lay down. If he says, come into the ministry, be a preacher. If he says, go into the desert and preach there. Whatever he says, you're willing to say, yes, I will lay down my life. That is what humility is all about. The final third one. Am I willing to serve the people of God that I normally would not want to serve? That's a very difficult one because you know something, uh, it's okay if I'm doing it for God, but God has a habit of sending to people who look less than you. You know, one of the amazing uh, women is Mother Teresa. She left a developed country to go to India. And when she got there, she didn't go to the rich people of India. She went to the slums. She lived among the slums. She loved them. She Embrace them, uh, and uh, the world has never forgotten who she is because she used a gift to lift up small people. That's what I'm talking about. Many of time, the people that God brings to us may not be, you know, the rich and the famous. They may not be uh, the ones who are in the same level and class like us. But the kingdom of God is for people who know how to humble themselves and say, "I am here to serve the people of God who are made in the image of God, no matter how." Lord they may look or how small they may look. I am willing to serve these people that I would not normally serve, but I do it with a willingness. I can bring them into my house. I can share my food. I can preach to them and I can love them because the love of God is shared abroad in my heart. And when you walk in humility, uh, God himself, he is getting ready to lift you up, getting ready to bless you. The time has come for us to pray right now. In the name of Jesus, let's stand up wherever we are, uh, in our houses, in our homes, even if you're on your own. Uh, it's time to bow your head before the Lord. It's time to know right now, my God, I refuse to let the enemy put pride into me. I refuse to let myself think of myself more highly than I ought to think. I refuse to let the flesh uh, get in the way uh, between me and what God has for me. I choose to humble myself. I say, God, I need you. I need your help. I need your salvation. I need your presence. If I have to kneel, I kneel. Uh, if I have to bow down, I bow down. Whatever God says, uh, God, I'm willing to obey. And, and, and as we do that, there is a lifting that comes from God above. Let's bow our head and let's pray right now. And Give yourself to the Lord. Humble yourself by yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this word that oh God it's our journey heavenly father to obtaining a more excellent ministry and my father as we come to this station uh, of humbling ourselves father we see our role model Jesus father we see how he was willing to be born of a woman how he was willing to grow up in a village how he was willing oh God uh, to submit even to uh, Joseph and Mary and become a carpenter uh, but for one reason that oh God he may humble himself and at the cross he died the death uh, my father God of a robber but you oh God lifted him from the grave you through the resurrection power and today he's at the right hand of the father and he's at, 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 at our high priest uh, we thank and I pray in the name of Jesus father here we are as your people oh God help us to love your people help us oh my father God to do what would not normally do oh God because out of your word we are learning the path of humility father God we reject the spirit of pride. We reject the presence of demons. We reject, oh God, uh, the lies and the deception of the wicked one. We break the power of demonic forces out of our lives. And in Jesus' name, Father, we want to please you. Teach us to walk, oh God, in the path of humility and to serve and to love your people and to be obedient and to be taught, oh God, your word and to please you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. You know, I know that was a very challenging teaching, but uh, that's the teaching that will open a door to a more excellent ministry. Meditate on those words. See how it applies in your life individually. Allow it to sink deep into you. And when it does that, God's blessing will rest upon your life. He says, God will resist the proud, but he will give grace to the humble. He is a lifter of those who choose to humble themselves. He will protect you, he will preserve you. The enemy will have no portion in your life. God bless you. We love you. And we want to hear from you what God is doing in your life. And we want to hear from you how this word is impacting your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. 
and we would love to hear what God has done in your life through this word. To give your offering, for prayer, and more information about Family Covenant Church, contact our offices on these numbers. Plus 263-292-882-451. Plus 263-773-362-101. Plus 263-784-332-48. Or email us on fccbyo at gmail.com. Or visit our website on familycovenantchurch.org.